be an overwhelming number of tasks to achieve at university. Writing up practicals, preparing for tutorials, writing assignments, writing up lecture notes, reading, socialising with friends, preparing meals, doing the washing. To help manage these tasks, they can be prioritised and this can help you manage your time and use it most effectively. Start doing this by listing the things that you need to do. Order them by priority and work out which are due first and which can be left for a while. Don't forget to put in some space for self-care as well as the basics like getting food or washing your clothes. One really helpful way of visualising all of these things is to use a matrix. We've adapted this from Stephen Covey's book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. In a nutshell, you build your matrix by having important and not important on the side. This is a way of prioritising things. Items in the not important aren't unimportant, they're just being prioritised slightly differently to the important things. You then put urgent and not urgent along the top to help you prioritise these things by how immediately you need to do them. We've pre-filled this in with some examples. Things with a deadline, like assignments, are in the important and urgent section, while things that you can take a bit more time with have been put in the important but not urgent column. You still need to do them, but you can be a bit more relaxed about it. The not important columns are still important. You need food, social time and to relax, but they are marked as less urgent and less important because they are less time sensitive. To help reduce your to-do list even more, one really good tip is to use the two minute rule. If a task isn't going to take more than two minutes, do it straight away. Simple. Breaking tasks down will help make them less daunting and make it easier to achieve the steps. So, for example, plan your essay into different sections depending on the question. If it is writing up a practical, then it's already been broken down into sections for you, which is really helpful. Don't forget, part of your writing process should be leaving a piece of work for a while and then coming back to it. This means that the whole thing doesn't have to be written in one session, so be kind to yourself. Be clear what you're trying to achieve in each session. It will be very satisfying if you achieve your goal and will help motivate you to move on to the next step. Make sure you have everything you need when you're studying. If you need paper, pens, a calculator, a laptop, tea and maybe even cake, whatever it is you need, make sure you have it at the start so you can focus on achieving the goal you have set for that study session. If we have a piece of work to achieve and we really don't want to do it, we will do whatever we can to put off doing it. That's totally normal. To overcome this temptation to procrastinate, make sure that you're working on tasks such as assignments at the most productive time for you, whenever that is. It might take you a while to work out what this means for you, so try experimenting until you find what works. To work most effectively, take regular breaks. You can use a timer to help you manage this. We quite like the Pomodoro method. Just taking a moment to stretch, get a cup of tea or drink some water can help prevent you burning out mid-essay. If you find it difficult to study in your room, don't study there. Work in a place where you are most productive, wherever that is. It could be a library, a coffee shop, everyone is different. If you find your phone is distracting you, turn it off or put it on silence so that you're not distracted by any alerts. We're all guilty of this. Try and keep your workspace organised, even if that means it might not look organised to anyone else. It will help save time if you know where to find what you need. In the end, you'll have to do the assignment, so just get on with it and do it. You know you'll feel much better when you've finished it. Make sure you know when your deadlines are, and plan your work accordingly. You can use a calendar, a diary, or even a wall planner to help you with this either stuck to your wall or on your phone. Don't leave it too late to look at what your assignment is asking of you. As librarians, we frequently meet people who want help with dissertations that are due in a week or a few days and they've left it too late. We would have been able to help them much more if they had contacted us sooner. We're happy to help you with your assignments and give you pointers to useful resources, so just ask. It can be hard to be focused when writing an assignment. It is helpful to keep referring back to the original question to make sure you're staying on track. Use it to guide your reading and your note-taking. Preparing your references section can be very time-consuming, so consider using a reference manager to help with this process. If you learn to use it now, it will help you later, especially when you're working on your final projects. Whatever you do, 
make sure you keep a record of your references as you go to avoid any last minute panics when you can't find an essential page number. Once you've received feedback on an assignment, look at it and use it to help set your priorities for your next study session. Good luck. Thank you.